Hello, I'm George Aiken and welcome back to the Govern HR YouTube channel. The last video took you through the HR risk matrix where we classified the risks into various categories from low to extreme risk. Today what we're going to do, before we get into all the uh, categories within the employee life cycle and beyond, we're going to go through the hierarchy of control. It's a control methodology and a control approach used uh, mainly in manufacturing, but it can be utilized in any industry and any product. So, as you can see, this is a pyramid upside down here. So, we go from the top here, where we have the most robust controls, right through to the least robust controls. So, we'll go through them step by step. Obviously, the first thing that can be done to eliminate a risk is to eliminate the underlying process. Now, a lot of people in HR will say, well, you, you can't eliminate uh, processes within HR, but we have and we can and we will. So we can show you that in, uh, in the follow-up when we go through the individual functions within the employee life cycle. Uh, eliminating a risky process or a poorly structured process uh, that doesn't belong within HR or that doesn't, doesn't require being done at all is, is always an option. The second one is to substitute. Now when we talk about substitute, you can swap an existing process for uh, a better process. So for example, you may have a risky task and it's risky because it's being managed by a poor vendor and you may decide to reintegrate that into your organization. That, that, that could be a substitution. Alternatively, you can have a poorly managed internal process that you outsource, that send it out uh, to a third party who could do it a lot better than you uh, because they have the economies of size and scale and the experience and they, they can do that. They can also mitigate against the risk of key person dependencies, but we'll, we'll go into that later. Um, you can also look at uh, offshoring. So if you have a fragmented process being conducted across many locations, you can decide to standardize it, commoditize it, and then centralize it. So bringing it together, tidying it up, and moving it to a centralized location to be conducted. Now that doesn't always have to be an outsource solution. It can be in source, so you can uh, offshore it to, a, to another location within your organization where you can get that done. The third one is engineering. Now, engineering uh, a process is, is an important one. It's one that's often uh, balked at by organizations because more often than not, it's an expensive solution. But it can be the best solution if done properly. And what do we mean by engineering? Well, you can always... Um, improve current technology, internal HR processing system, uh, internal HR database, payroll system, uh, a benefits system, a reward compensation performance management system. One of those systems that are causing you risk because it's poorly designed or it's no longer fit for purpose, uh, you can invest some money and conduct some improvements there, build some improvements. Alternatively, you can go out and buy a new system either off the shelf or have someone build it for you. Uh, or you can choose, there's a lot of options around artificial intelligence, AI at the moment, uh, and you could look into that uh, for uh, designing processes around artificial intelligence and having that conducted through bots. Uh, a lot of organizations are currently doing uh, a lot of the interview process, the collection of data, etc. Uh, that's also an alternative. Now, Getting that done properly is key. On the engineering side, and we'll look into that as we go through the respective uh, steps within the employee life cycle, but that is an expensive solution. It can be a brilliant solution if done properly. Now, an organization may balk at the cost and think that's too much, but I think if you balance it off, I think the long-term benefits in reduced risk, uh, reduced complexity, improved efficiency will we'll pay back in, in uh, uh, lots of dollars in return for that investment. 
as we go down the, the pyramid here, we look at administrative. Now, administrative from an HR concept is uh, training, uh, policies and procedures. Now, they work, but you've got to maintain them. The training needs to remain current. The policies and procedures need to remain current. They need to reflect what's going on. And quite often you see the training, the policies and the procedures don't keep up with what's happening on the ground on a day-to-day -day basis. So you, you pick up someone new starts in the organization, they pick up a policies and procedures manual, or they pick up a training manual, they read it, they get it, then they try to get the work done, and it just doesn't work because it's old, it doesn't matter what's going on. So again, important, needs to be constantly monitored, needs to con be constantly updated and upgraded to meet what's going on. And the final one is task management, and that is unfortunately where a lot of organisations do a lot of their investment, uh, and that is they, they try to uh, have checkers down here. Task management really is the checkers. So, you know, they may have a crappy process all the way down, but they'll invest here, and they'll invest like 30 people to do the checking at the bottom here to make sure we know the process is broken, we know there are poor controls, we know everything else doesn't work, but you know what, we've got 30 people here who will catch it when it comes to the end and it's broken and we pick it up and we go back and start the processes again. So this is the hierarchy of control. Uh, at Government HR, we've had extensive experience uh, in developing controls, looking at individual processes, identifying the risk, categorizing the risk, and then substituting the appropriate controls to remedy the, the problem and mitigate the risk for the organization. So please subscribe to this YouTube video and uh, you'll get the latest updates, particularly as we go through all the uh, life cycle uh, processes there. Uh, click the like if you like this. Leave us a comment or ask a question. We'll be happy to uh, respond and answer your questions. And please do check out our website. Thank you very much and have a great week ahead. Thank you.